everybody. This is Matty C. Trains here. We have a very, very special review for you today. Uh, today we're checking out the very unique and very rare MTH Premier 462 Pacific Duchess Class European LMS steam locomotive. This is a fantastic model, one of the most unique and beautiful locomotives in my entire collection. I'd love to share it with you all today, so let's get started. So jumping into the history of the actual Duchess class you see before you here, this locomotive was built around 1938 for the LMS Railway or the London, Midland, and Scottish Railway. Uh, for all of you who don't know what that railroad is, basically as its name suggests, this railroad went from London all the way over to Scotland. Um, this went from Glasgow to London and back. Um, this was mainly built for passenger service. In the United Kingdom, most locomotives were built for specific reasons, similar to here in the United States, although you would sometimes see multi-purpose engines get used for passenger and freight. But the Duchess class, or the uh, Royal Coronation class that you see before you, was mainly used as a passenger express locomotive to go at high speeds. Um, this locomotive's top speed was around 75 to 80 miles per hour um, and made record times over the years. Um, it also had routes going to Liverpool, uh, Manchester, and a few other uh, uh, spots along the line. Overall, this is a very powerful locomotive, and let's check over the actual features and details of the model. So starting at the front of the locomotive, right off the bat, you can see all this wonderful separately added detail. You have the hinge here that opens up the uh, front of the boiler, which would reveal all the ash and so forth and access to the ash pan of the uh, smokestack here. Um, you have 6233. By the way, I forgot to mention, 6233 is an actual locomotive that's still in use today uh, for excursion service. Um, it's a fantastic engine to see in person. I've never have yet, but I would like to. It's on my bucket list. Um, going back to the features of the locomotive, you can see there is a chain link coupling here at the bottom. And this was used a lot, mainly, and still used today in British Rail. Um, this is basically how they couple their trains. It's a little more intuitive than a knuckle coupler, but still same purpose. And then you have the brake hose here as well. Uh, I should note also that the buffers on this engine are sprung, which is really nice. The whole model, by the way, is also die-cast metal, which is absolutely awesome. Um, you have the separately fitted lamps here. Um, and the LEDs are inside them, which is really cool. Again, you have uh, separately fitted uh, handrails here. Then you have the smoke deflectors or the elephant ears. Um, just really cool to see all this detail. And then you have the builder's plate right here on the front of the boiler, unlike on the sides, which you see on an American engine. Very cool. So taking a look here at the side of the locomotive, you can see all this amazing running gear here. You have Duchess of Sutherland, which is, I believe, made out of brass. This is not a decal, which is really nice. You have the separately fitted handrails that go all the way down the side of the engine. You also see here on the roof, they have the safety valves as well as the whistle. Uh, you have the steam, the steam pipes here that on the side here going on to the uh, side of the uh, smoke box here. Just really unique and different. You have all this extra separately applied detailing here as well. On the bottom here, you can see the cylinder cocks for the uh, cylinders here, which is really cool and very accurate. Pretty much every British passenger steam engine does have this. It's really unique to see that. And again, the running gear is really, really well done. And then you have this extra crank here on the end of the running gear that actually functions. It's part of the locomotive, and it works really, really cool. Um, going to the truck detail here, again, very different. It's very streamlined, if you will. Uh, very nice separately added fitting details there as well. Uh, let's move on to the cab. So here we are at the cab of the locomotive. You can see an awesome printed 6233 as well as 7F, which is, to my knowledge, the classification of this locomotive. This is a 7F steam locomotive. Uh, very cool to see that. And you can see you have the extra deck that drops down, which is really cool. Die-cast metal as well. Uh, and then you could see these unique crew figures that are different than other crew figures you would see on traditional MTH locomotives. They're even in the proper uniforms that you would have seen on the LMS, which is really nice. 
Then you go to the side, the actual boiler head of the locomotive. The back head of this thing is really nicely detailed. You can see the separately painted valves and safety gauges and so forth and pressure gauges. And then it's a lit interior as well. There is no uh, lighted firebox because the firebox is actually closed on this model. But that's all right. And then if you look on the top of the engine, as I drop my pen, you can see you have these two different window, I mean, uh, roof vents here that you can open and close and move and position to your liking, which is very nice touch. Now taking a look here at the tender, right off the bat, you can see it is the paint job on this thing is absolutely beautiful. It is in a gloss finish. You can even see the extra rails uh, that are glistening and reflecting off of this thing. It is so beautifully painted, this whole model. It is really nicely done. Then you have the very nice and crisp, eligible LMS uh, logo there. Very, very nice. You have this beautiful brass trim going along the tender. You have a real co-load here. Then you have all this... Ep Awesome, separately fitted details and handrails and step ladders going to, uh, here's the chest that would open up for the coal to go onto the deck here. Very, very nice. And if you look here, you can also see the truck detail is very nice. And the, even the trucks have the matching maroon and brass uh, paint trim. Just very, very nice. Now taking a look here on the back of the tender, once again you can see these extra separately fitted details. You have the water hatch that opens up. That's really nice. And then you have these. Now these are lamp irons. Basically what you can do here throughout the course of the night for or daytime for a rail crew in the United Kingdom, they would put uh, color-coordinated lamps. They're, unlike uh, other American steam engines that would have marker lights on the back, uh, British crews would have to use their lamps and adjust to the situation of what's on the track. Uh, then once again, you have a brake hose on the back, and then you have the sprung buffers again. Now, this is a knuckle coupler on the back, obviously unrealistic to a British model like this. However, this is from MTH, and this is how that they were able to comply to the American market so that you can still run whatever you want with this engine. Obviously, you're going to mainly run passenger engines or do uh, American passenger uh, train cars or passenger cars to use as an excursion engine maybe visiting the United States, which I think is a really cool idea in itself. But that being said, let's move on to passenger cars. All right, so here are the LMS passenger cars we're going to check out today. I have a six-car set behind the locomotive. I'm only going to review this coach as well as the standard coach because all the other cars in the set are exactly the same. But nonetheless, all of them are very beautiful. As you can see, you might notice this from an old Lionel tooling that was used. Obviously, this is a different tooling in itself, but you might see this familiar because this is the similar or exact same coach as the Harry Potter cars, although this is what's considered a Mark I coach. A Mark I coach is a very standard coach in the United Kingdom. It's probably the most common passenger car on pretty much all the major railroads back there. Um, and the coach itself is very beautifully detailed, so let's check it out. Okay, starting at the front, you have this awesome severally fitted detailing once again. You have the lamp irons that can be used on this. You have the door that does not open, but that's okay. You have the rubber diaphragm, which is made out of real rubber, which is really nice to see. You have a couple of brake hose here, and then you have sprung buffers as well. So taking a look here at the side, I need to mention right off the bat, this is considered a combine or a mail car. So you can see it has different windows than you would see on a passenger coach traditionally. And it also has these bars here. Obviously, they're just printed into the windows, but still a really nice touch nonetheless. And this was very common in the United Kingdom as well as the United States. So you would have seen this a lot. And you have separately fitted handrails once again. Taking a look here on the sides, you can see that the trucks are beautifully detailed. If I go to the undercarriage of the car, you can see all that beautiful separately fitted detailing and brake assembly and everything. Just a phenomenal car. Really well done. The trucks are die cast metal. And you have also the top of the car here that has all these really cool rivet details 
or I believe that's what they are. I'm not too sure exactly what the function of these are. I'm sure they have a reason. I'm no expert on these, although I'm very expertive of the locomotive itself, but these are not so much. But anyways, let's move on to the next car. All right, so here it is, the very infamous Mark I coach. Now, this is a different coach, obviously. This is a passenger coach. You have tables inside here as well as seats. If I zoom in there, you can see that. They're unfitted. There's no passengers in these, but that's okay. You have the nice crisp LMS on the side, and then you have the really nice and crisp LMS logo, which is very beautiful. All right, folks, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this review of the locomotive and passenger cars. Once again, MTH did a phenomenal job on this engine. I can't express that enough, how unique and awesome that these trains really are. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to start up the locomotive and let you guys hear all the cool sounds that this engine has. Um, this engine has British-sounding driver and fireman, as well as custom station announcements and so forth that are for uh, the route that this engine used to run on. Uh, just really cool in itself, and the attention to detail is phenomenal. That being said, I'm Matty C, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Looks a good bit of coal, mate. It needs to be with this load. 